Good morning and welcome. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. We actually hit 100 degrees. I didn't think we did, but they, apparently for 10 minutes it was 100 degrees here. I want to say that. I think that was on Saturday. Uh, so a little, a little precursor, but it's going to get real nice again uh, this week and next. So hopefully. Hopefully we got a little while longer before we string together these 100-degree-plus days, uh, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh, boy, we had had a nice sell-off this morning in gold and silver. It's, you know, no bombs dropped, I guess, as far as the Israeli-Iranian thing. Uh, we're going to find another $100 billion, $96 billion. I don't know where we're going to get that. Well, I do know where we're going to get it. More debt. Uh, more war for everybody as uh, the U.S. Senate and the House passed the, what they called the foreign aid bill. I, I call it the war bill. Uh, money for Ukraine, Israel, uh, who else? Uh, Taiwan gets some money. The Palestinians get some money. All to keep the war drums beating. But on the good side, gold once again. 2325 we talked about that uh the last self remember how long that last what was it a day that one lasted a day uh held it again today which is what we want to see new higher support levels uh continuing to hold there silver didn't hold 28 but it held 27 which is which is another positive sign for that market as well as we've going to we're going to have uh, on Friday, we'll get the core CPE. This is the one number that's been below 3%. It's the only inflation number that's been below 3%. Uh, we'll get that number. They're hoping for 27 just to kind of let you know. Unfortunately, the month-over-month -month number is going to be hotter again. Uh, so it's kind of, you know... Kind of one of those, yeah, it looks, it looks better, but really isn't because inflation continues to be strong this year. And they had some light numbers at the end of last year. And then we're going to have 178 of the 500 S&P companies reporting earnings this week. And includes four of the Magnificent Seven Tesla, which is under pressure today, uh, Tesla's got a problem. They got a lot of cars that people don't want to buy right now, lowering prices. Microsoft, Alphabet, and Meta. So, Jason, it's going to be an action-packed week as far as earnings go. And then, of course, on Friday, uh, that inflation number, uh, that, like I said, it's going to be a number that will be under 3%. So that will give the rate cutters uh, some optimism. Yeah, we'll see, right? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what they do. I, I, uh, the Fed has been actually uh, doing the things they when they say they're actually going to do something, they actually do it, but they haven't really committed, have they, Joe? They haven't really committed that they're doing it. They just are, are putting it out there that they want to. But so uh, we'll see. I think when we get closer to June, I think we'll know kind of what they want to do. I, th I think that, that we'll have a chance. They may come out and just say, hey, we're going to cut in June, and then they will cut in June. Or they may say, yeah, oh, we're not going to cut right. in June, and then they won't. Right, right. That exactly right. It, and uh, it, it's they want to cut. That's the big thing. They would love to cut, but uh, well, you know, this this thing called inflation just keeps getting in the way. And when we look at uh, what we've done, another hundred billion. You know, let's call it you know another hundred billion dollars. That's just going to get tacked on to the national debt. It's not like we had this money laying around. Right, we didn't have ninety-five billion just you know sitting in in, in an account somewhere, uh, waiting for something to spend it on. Uh, it's going to again put more pressure on the U.S. debt situation. Uh, Morgan Stanley was out with a note over the weekend, now saying that this unsustainable and you know everybody's saying, it. "Hey, guys, what are you doing? Like, wait, you can't." go into debts like this you can't add two and three trillion dollars to the national debt and are you guys pay you know how much debt's got to get rolled over next year and the year after that the year after are, are you guys even paying attention 
Uh, but they said that the United States now has maybe a couple of years to get the debt under control or there's going to be a major crisis. And Jason, at least so far, nobody has shown any willingness to do anything other than keep spending. Yeah, just keep keep pushing till something breaks, I guess, Joe, right? Just keep keep going. Just keep pushing, keep printing, keep give uh, business as usual as much as they can until it breaks, I suppose, Joe. I mean, it, it just feels, you know, it feels like the, a lot of people are waiting for something to break, right? It's, you know, there's a lot of people waiting for some bad stuff to happen this year and next year. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, when it happens, and then uh, what will the result will be, which is uh, there, there'll be a big change, Joe. There's, there's changes coming. Yeah, and, you know, here's the thing. We weren't alone in the list. UK, France, right? I mean, Japan, forget about it, right? They, they, those guys uh, are toast already. Uh, but but it does really seem to start painting this picture of just what we've said. The year of chaos this year, it's what comes after that really starts to paint the picture. And, and, and what we have right now, Jason, is a situation where we're rolling in. The, the 2024 is over halfway over for the federal government. I mean, fiscal year 2025 starts in October. I mean, uh, th th this is a situation where I don't know how to get it under control unless I get, well, are we going to try to inflate out? It sure looks that way, doesn't it? Right? Hey, I don't be surprised if that's what they say. You know what? Heck, that's what we're going to 5% inflation. That's what we're going to need, right? Maybe 6, 7. Who knows? Paper Radio News Hour. We'll be back. 800-951-0592, Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour, here on this Monday, a quick look in at the markets. Uh, boy, you think you'd hope for a little better uh, here on Wall Street right now. Uh, the Dow is up, but it's only up 30 points. The S&P uh, below 5,000, it's up two points right now. The Nasdaq just went negative. Uh, down about 15 points. It's going to be a very interesting earnings week. We're going to get a really good indicator of, of what's going on business-wise throughout 170-plus S&P companies reporting this week. The 10-year note, 463, uh, just kind of hanging out uh, between 46 and 465 Crude oil unchanged right now at $83. Like we said, we had a nice sell-off. We're, we're, we're searching right now. Uh, like we said, these pullbacks, you don't really get it all, do you? You don't get all of the – right now, gold's down 60, uh, but but gold prices uh, are hanging very tough right now. Uh, 23.35, silver's down a dollar and a half. At 2731. But again, remember, what are we really preparing for? We're preparing for what comes next. And that's that's really the issue. Now, we, you, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, Bank of America came out and said, hey, by the way, let's, let's just lay this out. Okay. Here's how much the interest payments are going to go up. Right. We're going to be paying by the end of this year, according to them, $1.6 trillion in interest. I mean, we just started paying a trillion. I mean, that just happened like at the end of last year, right? And then, and then it jumped up to 1.1, now 1.2, right? You can kind of see how it's going. And by the way, interest rates have only gone higher. Running deficits. They're, they're talking about a 2025 deficit. Maybe it, it, it may take out the COVID debt. We could see an all time record high on it. Think about $1.6 trillion by the end of this year. That's more than any program we got. That's more than Social Security. If you combine Medicare and Medicaid together, I think they're at like 1.7, right? That, that gives you the scope. Of how big the problem is, they said in 2025 it could be two trillion, right? It'll be the biggest expense that we have. 
And this is why, then then today, Morgan Stanley, hey, but guys, 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 are you listening? Please pay attention, right? And nobody's listening. Instead, what did we do? Another $100 billion that we don't have going to war. This is why we tell you get diversified here. Get more diversified. you got to have gold and silver. You know that. Can't believe how many people listen and, and know they need to do it and haven't done it yet. I mean, you can do it by calling us. You can do it with, you got an old 401K or an IRA. We can help you with that. But then check out our friends over at Y Refi. Listen, you get up to 10.25% fixed rate of return. What does that mean, fixed? It means it doesn't change. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if it doesn't change? Interest rates go up. Interest rates go down. They do something about the debt. Which, uh, let's face it, that, they're not doing that. Right, we know that. Right? They're going to spend us into oblivion. And this is why you need to stay diversified. If you've got $50,000 or more, at least check them out. InvestYRefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y, R E F Y.com. Or just call them at 888 YREFI24. Now, why is. Why are we struggling today, right? Because you're looking, we got a, a sell-off here in gold and silver. And like I said, you know, this is, here. here's the thing. If, if gold and silver were selling off because they said, oh, my gosh, we didn't realize it. But we just had all the mines in the world start producing triple the amount. Okay. All right. Man, we got all the supply we didn't know about. I don't know how that would happen. Of course, that didn't happen, right? This is more, uh, hey, it's been a big run. Uh, No more, you know, the war with Iran and Israel may may be uh, slowing down. Let's take take some profits. This is a good day to buy. There's definitely that. But here's the reason why the Dow's really not running. Large cracks now appearing in commercial real estate. This thing is, that Jason said it so many times, it's a slow moving train wreck they're saying that uncertainty around regional banks is flashing red again here we go right here we go it's really a question okay which one is it going to be how many more steve mnuchins are out there to come to ride to the rescue of some regional bank out there the latest data now shows Commercial real estate foreclosures in March alone, 625. That's nuts. Up 117% from the same month a year earlier. So, Jason, think about how bad 2023 got, right? Remember last March, that was uh, Silicon Valley, Signature Bank. And now commercial real estate foreclosures have more than doubled in just the last 12 months alone. Yeah, anytime there's failures, right, Joe, it uh, it puts a lot of stress uh, all over the place. It's not not just uh, uh, one single bank, right? It's every bank connected to that bank. It's... uh, it's the cities that are that are attached to those commercial loans uh, for whatever institution is carrying a heavy burden in that. It's it, it's it, the contamination for just one regional bank can be so bad. That's why it was such an emergency last year, and why everyone's watching it. But you're right; it's, it seems like Joe, it's just a little bit at a time. So somebody somebody must be slowly trying to uh, slow the leak, so to speak. But when whoever it is that's slowing the leak decides they don't want to do it anymore, it's gonna it's gonna burst. The dam's just gonna break. Well. I liken this to a hot air balloon with a leak in it, yeah. right? Everything, okay, it's just a little one. Oh, we're, we're losing a little altitude, and now all of a sudden, right, that pace, that the rip's getting bigger and bigger. You're starting to fall faster and faster. By the way, just the record is only 889 in a month. We're already at 625, and, and what they're saying is, hey, we're going to take the record out this year. It's going to happen, and the questions now, they said, 2023, it was mostly California. Now they're saying New York, Florida, Florida. I thought Florida was great. Texas, what? I thought Texas was great. Remember, Houston's broke. 
New Jersey and, and others now, it, it's spreading, Jason. Kind of like cancer, right? This thing is just spreading. Yeah, and, you know, it's not just these commercial loans. You know, these businesses have to pay these commercial loans, and then they get caught in a, sort of a bad spot with the uh, the low interest rates versus where the interest rates are now. They can't refinance. But they, there's the pressure, Joe, of this inflation, which is causing causing uh, co- uh, these businesses to figure out, well, what do we do? Do we charge more for this? Do we cut back on that? Uh, we're waiting for all this uh, th- these job losses, right, Joe, to, 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 to kick in. But uh, it just seems like they're replacing expensive labor with cheaper labor is what appears to be happening. So it's uh, it, it is not easy for some of these businesses that need to refinance, and that's just how they do business. I, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I, I prefer not to do so much debt, right, Joe? You know, debt is it, it's, it catches you in the end, doesn't it? Any, anytime you're running a lot of debt, unless you're really smart about it, uh, it'll catch you, and, and uh, that's what we're seeing, and it's – you know, one business at a time, Joe, it'll just keep on happening, right? These these uh, loans are, like you said, are failing at a record right now. Well, and, and listen to this. You know the bank lending facility that is no longer open? No. All the all these debts now got to start getting paid back. To, you know, they could borrow it for, for a year. Over, uh, over the weekend, they let us know 1,800-plus banks borrowed money from from that facility so it just kind of tells you right we're not talking about a couple of banks here 1800 plus i want to say it was like 1804 we've only got you know 4000 banks so almost half of them had to borrow money from the facility. Uh, Jason, I think this is very indicative, and this is why a bunch of people have said, listen, here's the problem. Too many of these banks are just dependent upon a handful of big businesses with big money in their banks. They have 40, 50, 100 million, whatever it may be, $200 million, and if they pull it, they're done. And, And... Essentially, the next scare, everyone's probably going to pull and go to the and just go to the big banks, and that's all that's going to be left. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, Joe. That the average guy you go into the bank, you don't. It's not really a pleasant experience, is it? <laughs> I'm, you know, if you're one of those big companies, if they're going to cater to you, but uh, there's not a lot of catering to the customers of the banks anymore, is there, Joe? You, you know that there's problems with the banks, and they can't, they can't even treat their their uh, their average uh, Joe small depositor with the same, you know, uh, decent treatment. That, you know, I remember going to the bank how everybody was just they would just fall down for you. They just loved that you were there. They, they needed to have as many people in that area come to their bank and do business at their bank. And uh, just as you said, they they cater to these massive businesses, and there's really nothing else they care about. It's you know they're too leveraged heavily in the big huge businesses. Man, what will happen if one of those guys fail, Joe? Yeah, and that's that's just something we're going to have to we'll keep our eye out. But it was kind of interesting uh, to see just how many banks uh, had to go to that window. It, it will, and we'll continue to watch as, as commercial real estate. Like I said, we're closing in on a record. They anticipate uh, that this year we will set new records in commercial real estate uh, foreclosures and and I think it's part of the reason why you've got so many of these uh, people out here is ju- just getting a little bit worried about what exactly is going on with debt levels. It, it causes inflation. I'm going to say, you know, they're now saying 52 of the largest 100 metro regions in the country. So think about that. You take the largest 100 metro regions – you got the the majority of the U.S. population, right? That, that's like saying uh, the ten biggest banks, right? They've got like ninety percent of the deposits, right? They, they, so, in fifty-two of the hundred now, middle-class households cannot afford to buy a home. Doesn't that make you not middle-class, right? 
If, how are you middle class if you can't afford to buy a home, right, Jason? This is, this is what's happening. And this is why, you know, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, all the rest of them are so worried. This is why all of a sudden, why is inflation getting out of control again? Jason, it's simple math. There's too much money being created, and it's losing its value. That's right. Right. There's too many dollars also coming home from from foreign interest on top of that. So the, anything that's could be bad for money supply is happening all at once, Joe. So it's uh, it's, it's going to get inflation is going to get worse. I don't see how it doesn't get worse unless the Fed, you know, starts to raise the rates to conquer the inflation and, and drop the markets down. So that's uh I guess it's in the Fed's hands. They, uh, for whatever reason, the uh, people of 1913 wanted to give the power of money creation and the interest rates to uh, to one entity. And uh, I don't think they're going to raise interest rates, Joe. I just I just don't see it. I, I guess I could see it when inflation starts to tower out of control. Then we might see rate increases. Like Jamie Dimon said, it would maybe go up, right, Joe? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't think that. I don't think they're even thinking about raising rates, which is another scary thing. Just means inflation's going to roar back. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine five. 592 Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Monday. Uh, buy the dips from the dips, as we like to say. Uh, on the silver side, I just got notification. We've got a couple thousand five ounce sunshine silver bars and when we when we talk about silver bars right there's there's the the cream of the crop right and you want you know Engelhart Johnson Matthew sunshine is is right there with them they're the ones they actually produce all the disc for the silver eagles the planchets their sunshine is the one that does all the ordering for the U.S. Mint, these are five ounce sunshine silver bars. They're at a hundred and sixty dollars a bar. If you want to buy ten bars or more, we'll take them down to one fifty-five uh, at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. You know, Silver Eagles right now. Hey. They're, they're cheaper today by for sure. $25 cheaper today at $725 uh, if you want to pick up U.S. Silver Eagles. But that, you know, you're over $36 an ounce. Uh, you, you buy 10 or more five ounce silver bars, you're like at $31 an ounce. So you can see, Jason, pretty big difference in, between the two. Obviously, when you sell them back, we pay you more for Silver Eagles than we do for Silver Bars. Uh, but uh, not very often are we going to be paying you five dollars, you know, five dollars more on silver. Sometimes we have. Let's you know, during COVID, we were we were definitely paying a pretty big premium for it, but not not very often. No, I tell all the customers that come in when because a lot of new customers they don't know what type of silver should I buy. There's this, there's that, there, and everything else. I always tell them that the number one thing when it comes to buying gold and silver is that make sure you have a good gold and silver dealer. That's the number one thing you have to have is the gold dealer because whether you're buying it or later on if you're selling it, you want to be treated fairly on both sides. And so it doesn't really matter if you're buying junk silver or, or silver bars or silver eagles or Canadian maple leaves. Make sure that the company that's charging you is, is, is keeping that that uh, those margins pretty equal to what they are. Yeah, you buy silver bars cheaper above spot, you get more silver on the front end. When you go to sell it, you'll get uh, less on the back end, but you already paid less to, on the front end. Same thing with eagles. You pay all this extra money for silver eagles. In a lot of ways, it's like you know, a lot of silver bar guys and silver round guys, they're like, I don't got to pay that much for silver eagles. But then somewhere down the line, somebody has to sell those bars and, and – uh, when they could be getting several dollars over spot for silver eagles, they're going to get spot, uh, depending on where the market is for for silver bars, and uh, that's just the way it works. So it's yep. uh, whatever we got, whatever's the cheapest, whatever's the, the special. It, it our specials are special. Those are the cheapest item we got that day, and that's why we put it on the air. Absolutely, eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two, and uh, snuck in to the aid. Package or not, you know, aid. 
the war spending package over the weekend was a Repo Act HR 4175. This is this is why we're going to continue to uh, lose status throughout the world, and it's a dangerous game that we're playing. This bill essentially authorizes the confiscation of Russia's sovereign assets that sit primarily in Europe. This includes funds, property uh, of the Russian Central Bank, uh, direct investment funds or finance funds. Now, we have frozen these quote-unquote assets, but under this bill, it now gives somebody, again, this is, this is why this happens. Hey, we're just going to change the law. Change the law and decide that we can confiscate these funds and use it for the Ukraine Support Fund establishment. Now, this is for the reconstruction or the rebuilding uh, of Ukraine after the war is over. Why do I got the feeling, Jason, as this war drags on for another year, they'll, somehow this will change. So let's just give it to them now to buy more bullets, right? But this is, listen, remember the list that we gave, was it Friday? We gave the, the, all the countries that have applied for memberships into BRICS. I don't, I don't know if you guys caught it. There's like 20 more countries now that want to that wanna go to BRICS. How about uh, Niger? Uh, the Biden administration just announced we're pulling out. We're pulling our troops out of Niger uh, because Niger said get out and didn't take very long. Guess what? Chad now, Chad says, you know what? We don't want your troops here either. Get them out. Jason, this is why. It's stuff like this. I've been having some discussions with some listeners over this subject of uh, of what's going on in Niger. It's uh Maybe in the, the half empty cup of Joe, and it was Steve uh, Mitchell comes on. We'll talk a little more about the uh, the non financial side of it, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I think you're going to see more of this. I think you're going to see more of this. I don't think it's exactly what the news is saying it is, but uh, uh, yeah, these countries uh, they've they've decided, hey, we don't want American, we don't want this Americans here, and, and now this American inflation is making things worse on us. We think this other thing might be better for us, you know. But uh, it, it's a little more complicated than that, but. Okay, you know, you know, trade one boss for another boss, you know, because Niger's going to bring in Russia, you know. Someone's going to use that $120 million, you know, air base, that, that drone base that's uh, that's sitting in Niger. Someone's going to want to use that, now, and, and uh, Niger is welcoming in the Russians as if that's going to be a big solution. But but here it is. Get rid of America. Get rid of America is, is a chant that's going to get, I think, stronger and stronger. And uh uh, that's not good for that's not really good for American dollar inflation, Joe. Well, you know, you, you bring up a really good point because right now the dollar it's so strong right now because you know we're the we're the best of the worst, right? I guess that's you know kind of the statement, but this really hurts all of these countries because their currencies are weaker to the dollar, which makes inflation, which already bad, that much worse. And you're right, Jason. They're like, wait a minute. Look at what they're doing, seizing assets. Now they're just going to take them and, and use them for whatever the heck they want. You know what? Just, the list just keeps growing. And you're right. Hey, maybe this other, these other guys, maybe it'll be better for us. Because they're, they're looking at it this way. Gosh, if we had Renembi... If we were using the, the, the Chinese renminbi, because it's been getting weaker and weaker, it would actually be, inflation would be better. Because that currency isn't nearly as strong. I think that's a, that's a huge part of all of this. And it's kind of, kind of a weird thing, isn't it? Because you know what? We've done this before, wiped out countries. There wasn't an alternative before. There kind of is now, is it? They're not, you know, it's, it's there. We'll be back after the break. 
800-951-0592. Joe and Jason, Patriot News Hour on this Monday. Uh, five ounce sunshine silver bars, $160. Buy 10 or more, $155 at 800-951-0592. Uh, last week we told you looks like Red Lobster is getting ready to file for bankruptcy protection. And just now, Express, the clothing re- retailer Express, has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, uh, saying they're going to close a hundred stores. Uh, of course, you know, Express, you know, pretty much is in most malls, you know, at least around here. Uh, they've already started closing stores here in Arizona before this announcement. Uh, but Jason, it, it's this bankruptcy thing, right? We talked about commercial real estate bankruptcies, and now we're starting to see. You know, some of these these retailers that maybe, hey, they, there was a fine line, right? Fine line between, hey, we're doing okay, we're making it and not making it, and all of this inflation starting to push them over the edge. We're starting to see uh, more of these filings coming now in the retail side. That's going to keep on happening too. I, I think the rest of this year and next year, you're going to see a lot of a lot of businesses falter and fail. Uh, the real small businesses, George, I I, I, uh, <laughs> I fear for them the most because uh, some of them have those uh, those commercial loans too, right, Joe? And uh, not having to refinance into the higher rate. And if inflation continues, which it looks like it will, then you can't get the lower rate. You can't wait. There's not going to be enough waiting around to get it. And if the rates were to creep up, because uh, let's just say six months from now the inflation is even even worse, and the Fed actually is dr- drug into this, uh, I see. I think you see a lot of uh, businesses make the decision to go under because they. I think some of them are just trying to survive, thinking that the rates are coming down. They hear all this speak about rates coming down. Hey, if we could just make it three more months, the rates will come down, and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll do a loan there, and we'll see if we can float this boat a little further. But if it doesn't go that direction, and the inflation just gets worse. Uh, yeah, I think what you're, what you're talking about, Joe, uh, with bankruptcy filings, that will go up, and they will go up dramatically. And then, uh, yeah, I I think there's going to be a lot of these uh, that were, hey, we we were either we were barely hanging on before, or hey, we were we were an okay run company, not not great, but okay. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, inflation just takes that all away from you. Uh, it, and then you're stuck, right? And then uh, the bankruptcy filings uh, are going to follow. And then when we talk about inflation, I'm just certain things. Crude oil next year gets a lot more expensive. This is a good year for crude Just, And it's all about inventory. Because we, we, we're at max here, right? We, there's not much left for us. That, the, you know, a little over 13 million. Of course, the Biden administration talking about declaring a climate emergency, right? I mean, to make it worse. We told you about silver and how bad the physical stockpile situation is. Huge shortages. Tin. Last week it was tin, right? They're like, hey, uh, there's not enough tin. Today it's copper. So copper, which we've been telling, you know, we've been watching copper. It's approaching, you know, record highs. And now they're saying copper's going to hit a new high this year with a deficit of 35,000 tons. Okay, now that's, that's a lot. The problem is the deficit's going to be 100,000 tons next year. All of this, you know, because of the electronic cars, the EV, right, the whole climate change initiative, we are on the verge of seeing the biggest bull market in commodities. So think about it. oil, copper, silver, gold, right, uh, aluminum, and you name it. The list just goes on and on and on. The verge of the biggest bull market in commodities since the 70s they're going to cut rates 
because they want to avoid a financial crisis, a banking crisis, and it's going to set off the largest commodity bull run since the 1970s, Jason. And I think that's, that's the choice, isn't it? Financial crisis, commodity crisis, you pick. Right. Inflation crisis, Joe. <laughs> it's going to be an inflation crisis. You know, you lower the rates. Actually, it's an easy, it's not even a complicated decision, isn't it? It's an easy no. choice for them. They're going to go with inflation. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think so, too. I think so, too. So, uh, yeah, I don't, what would happen around the first quarter point? <laughs> reduction i mean i could you know it's like such a small little nothing amount right but uh, uh when you when you got these gigantic numbers balancing on top of that that rate uh it, it feels like uh, you know, a, a tremendous thing would happen just on a one quarter rate reduction one quarter point rate reduction it's just well, they, uh, they've made that into a big deal haven't they oh right. my gosh it's a whole quarter point it's I mean, it's just nothing, right? I don't even know how to describe it. It's so insignificant. Haven't they proven they really can't control inflation with interest rates? Didn't they prove that? Hasn't that been proven yet? I mean, we went from zero to five and a half, and and it's still here. It's still here and getting worse. And, and, and we're seeing this. I mean, how do you end up? With a hundred thousand ton shortage in copper, how does that even work? But what, what, what are they going to say? Oh well, sorry, sorry Tesla or sorry wh- whatever company, uh, you're not going to get your copper to build your car today. No, what's going to happen is they're going to build the car. It's just going to cost five and ten thousand dollars more. Yeah, that's another five or ten. Patriot Radio News Hour final segment. 800-951-0592, uh, the special today, Sunshine 5-ounce silver bars, uh, 1 through 9 at $160, buy 10 or more, $155 at 800 951 and, and secure it today. You got silver down a dollar and a half, so it's a great time uh, to, to pick up some more silver here. I know we just ran all that silver spectacular stuff. You know what's so funny? Even when they fall in a dollar and a half, the quarters are more expensive today. We sold out of them at two ten. They're two twenty, uh, and, and uh, that's just, that's kind of how how that uh, that goes. So congratulations. That that, that was. Such a great deal uh, that we had there last week. We're working on some gold for tomorrow. So uh, pay attention for tomorrow. Hopefully gold's not back up $60 tomorrow. Let's hope that it's not and get an opportunity maybe uh, to put some away at a lower price. But like I said, Jason, all eyes are going to be on earnings season. And we've already kind of seen, right, the the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ already back away from the all-time highs, uh, it's going to be a good indicator of uh, how, do we have a lot further on the downside to go? Because if if they're already going to have a tough week this week, how much worse will it be as the year goes on? That's going to be an interesting thing to watch. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, so many of them are reporting. I know uh, Tesla's already lost like 40%. It's down 4% today. I'm sure that copper note could not, uh, probably didn't help Tesla stock at all today. Yeah, and that you, that national debt, man, it's pushing towards that 30 30- Thirty-six trillion, or oh, yeah, I'm losing my numbers now. Thirty-five trillion. It's moving to thirty-five trillion. I mean, we just barely crossed over thirty-four, right? Here, it, here it is, Joe. I mean, the interest. Boy. I mean, when you, when Joe talked about the interest on the debt, it's just making the overall number just rocket ship out out of control. Yeah, it would be what thirty-five trillion next month. I mean, Maybe sooner. We're already thirty-four <laughs> trillion, almost thirty-four yeah. seven, right? I mean, yep, it's yep. It's just incredible. Uh, and remember, you know, Bank of America is saying, listen, don't be surprised if we're at 37 by the end of the year. I mean, that's that's mind-blowing. I, I hope they're wrong. 
you know, we were talking about how a, a quarter percent reduction in the rates is not a big deal. But I was thinking of some numbers out loud in my head and uh, on the break. And, you know, if, if I owe Joe a, a quarter percent on a hundred bucks, I'd, I'd owe him a quarter, you know, 25 cents, no big deal. But if it's a quarter percent on a hundred trillion dollars, it's $250 billion. That's what a, a little quarter percent rate reduction, it means $250 billion because because we, we, we're talking about $35 trillion on the national debt. That's one-third of $100 trillion. Quarter right. percent means a, quite a bit. It's, it's, it's ridiculous that we're here, but that's where we're at, Joe, where a quarter yeah. percent on, on this is, is quarter a percent's deal. like Quarter percent is like $100 billion, right? Quarter percent is like, like, like $100 billion. So, you know, you start doing the math, uh, it, it, it's – it's it's scary, it really. It's just scary because I'm sitting here and I'm looking at all the all the commodities and, and the inventory levels. They've never come back uh, from before COVID, and and now the government's just decided to. Ha- I, apparently, they don't care because they just spent another hundred billion dollars. I mean, I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't see. It. I, I see us having to live with much higher inflation, which is great news for gold and silver. 800-951-0592. Jason and I, we're coming right back with the Half-Empty Cup.